everyone. I'm Liz Bruner and welcome back to CNG TV. I'm joined right now on the set by one of my new cornet friends, Mike Bricado. Good to have you here this afternoon, Mike. Thank you for having me. You have had extensive experience working with Fortune 500 companies and sort of centralizing and streamlining all their real estate function. How do companies deal with all this big data today? Well, it's an interesting question because at the end of the day, a lot of the issue is that there's too much data, right? Yeah. We, when we started this kind of whole initiative around technology and understanding data, it was really a battle to kind of find that data and then figure out ways to synthesize it and, and make something of it. Now it's really figuring out how do we filter out what's too much data and get something that's a little bit more practical with our clients. And, and, and how do you do that? Because if you are drowning in data and there's so much there, how do you how do you narrow that focus? It's it's really about figuring out what is the data, what, what's the story that the data has to tell, right? So and inevitably, all of our jobs are based on certain types of metrics or understandings of what mm -hmm. we need to accomplish. And it's trying to figure out what is it that we need to demonstrate as value, whether it's us as a service provider or someone on the end user side, and then kind of reverse engineering, what's the data that we need in order to kind of create and show those metrics? And then over time, we can show kind of continuous improvement of value or you know cost reduction or whatever the case may be. Speaking of cost, I mean, everyone tracks you know per square foot, per employee, a bunch of other things. What's new on the horizon in terms of the CRE performance metrics? <sighs> It changes all the time. Does it change um, every day? <laughs> yeah, no, and, and you know, metrics are one of those things. It's uh, it kind of, you can have a million different conversations, and people always have a different perspective. But I, I think for now, we're starting to see a lot more, really around the utilization as we kind of continue mm -hmm. to you know understand the co-working you know disruption. Not that it hasn't been around for a while, but. Right that has been really heavily focused on. And so I think as we continue to understand utilization and how much that cost is, uh, I think that's gonna continue to really drive some of the, uh, the CRE metrics that we're looking at. From your perspective, what are some of the common inefficiencies to, that, that might be hindering in performance or improving performance? <sighs> yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think it's, we get bogged down sometimes, I think mm -hmm. by looking at, again, going back to too much too data, much too much metrics. And I think if, when we look at how we kind of pull together that data, pull together some of the information, it's it's really streamlining to what is going to demonstrate the right message, mm -hmm. again, within the organization, but also from our perspective as a service provider of how we can add value. So it's really kind of trying to narrow down uh, that focus. Is there room for improvement? <laughs> There's always room for improvement, right? I mean, I think everything, we, yeah, right? I mean, we always, you know, like to try and think we're, you know, the best at whatever we do in any, you know, shape or fashion because people work so hard at it, but. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know, you'd be lying to ourselves if you, you know, didn't recognize the fact that there's always some ability for room for improvement. So, well, I have to brag on Mike just a little bit because I understand you've been nominated by your chapter for the Cornet Global Young Leaders Award, which is fantastic. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. Why do you find Cornet so valuable, and why? What would you say to other people about joining the membership? Yeah, it's interesting. When I first started, and I was actually having this conversation earlier today with one of our uh, new young leader members that just moved up from the D.C. market, and I said to him, it's, it's really about investing in the community within Cornet itself, mm -hmm. right? And I think we all come here to learn new things, kind of create that network, but we're all here to help each other build value and support one another. Um, it's, it takes time. Uh, there's no, no two ways about it, and it's certainly an investment mm -hmm. when you think about you know, having to do, you know, the volunteering of the committees and attending all these events. But my advice to people is just stick with it. And, and really, if you, if you truly care about what the cause of the organization is and help kind of drive that message, you'll find a way to get value out of it. Well, you're from Boston, and here we are in Boston, yes. which is kind of nice to have the Global North American Summit here. <laughs> it's, it's weird. i not having to come on a plane to be here, which is, uh, which is exciting, although it was a 30-minute Uber ride, even though it was there you uh, go. not that far away. So... Well, thanks for stopping by, Mike. We wish you continued success. Thank you. And I uh, it. good luck with the coronet stuff, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.